Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie again, Lonnie Clark from Nuts for Art. That's my YouTube channel, Nuts for Art. This is my Fukushima protest challenge. I'm going to interview one of our participants who has come by here and is interested in finding out more. And he actually has his own pair of radiation vision glasses. They help you see radiation. They do not. And he has chosen to take radiation glasses instead of the earplugs. So this is what we really need. There you go. Now do you see it? Yes. I can definitely see the radiation much more clearly. I thought you could. Okay, so I'm going to ask you three questions about radiation. First off, do you want to tell me your name? My name is Eric Reynolds. I'm from Eugene, Oregon. Eric Reynolds. That's not the name you told me before. I go by Zortron with my friends. Zortron. Okay, so YouTube, we're friends. So this is Zortron. And so, Zortron, I want to ask you three questions. First off, what do you know about radioactivity or radiation? Well, I know that the people who discovered uh, radioactivity um, thought that it was harmless and could be used for different sorts of uh, medical endeavors, and that probably 20 years after the discovery, they died of cancer. And um, so it's clearly extraordinarily harmful. And they also know that on really massive, or on a really massive scale, um, radioactive materials are being sort of distributed into our environment uh, through our air and also our water and so that's a really large problem. Right. Okay and then I want to ask you what do you know about Fukushima? Um, I mean all I know really is that uh, in 2011 there was a tsunami and during the tsunami there was a disaster at the nuclear power plant in Fukushima, Japan and um, three of the reactors melted down and caused quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of damage and sort of radioactive contamination to the Pacific Ocean. That's about all I, I know about it. And what do you think of it now? Do you know what's going on there now? Um, what I know is that, I mean from what I've heard anyway, cleanup teams can't really access the material because no one can be in a lot of the areas around Fukushima for more than about 40 minutes at a time. And so, um, Nothing is being done about it. Wow. Okay, and then I'm going to ask you, I know I said three questions, but that second question that was just a follow-up. So this is the third question, okay. the official third question. What do you know about Hanford? Honestly, I don't know anything about it. Do you know where it is? Um, Washington? Yeah. Okay, do you want, I'll give you some information on it so we can capture okay. it. I found out about it myself just in 2012. I've been in Oregon since 2004 and didn't really know that much about it until I had a nightmare and I found out about Fukushima and then found out about Hanford. Hanford is on bas basically at the uh, on the Columbia River, right where the river turns up to go upwards north, and it's. Uh, uh, I think it's like 400 square miles. It's a gigantic area. It was an Indian reservation. The government kicked those people out and built their first nuclear weapons there. And so this, it's been in a decommissioning state for a super long time. It's been being managed by Bechtel Corporation, who has, against the law, illegally dumped 40 miles of Radio, highly radioactive material into unlined trenches to the point now where it's seeping into the ground and is only a hundred feet away from the groundwater up there. People up in Hanford have been uh, basically they get sick it causes many of the children to have problems it is still in the, 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 the tanks now they have several hundred tanks there they're all leaking radioactivity and it is a, a gigantic mess. I mean, it, it's in Portland, right off of the mouth of Portland is one of the biggest dead zones on the planet. Hanford, prior to Fukushima, was deemed the most contaminated site on the entire world. And it's only been superseded by Fukushima because the Japanese government ignored Fukushima to the point now where it's in China syndrome. Fukushima is in China syndrome and it is it's uncontrollable. The corium, they're in fear that it's going to catch fire. So it's a seriously bad situation there. So, do you have any other questions that you'd like to ask me? I mean, 
Given the expertise that you seem to, to have on the subject, I wonder if you know anything about depleted uranium munitions used in the Middle East by the United States. Yeah, you know, there's in fact a really great Facebook page called uh, Fallujah Babies. And it is actually, they show pictures of what happens to the children there. The women in Fallujah, where we spent the, we basically carpet bombed Fallujah with depleted, illegally mind you, illegally bombed with depleted uranium weaponry up there. The women in Fallujah now are told, do not have babies because their birth rate is like 90% of the babies are born dead or mutated. They have... They have, they give birth to like babies with jelly bean baby heads, like in the Marshallese they called it jelly bean heads because so many of the children were born with these grotesque mutations, they wanted to give it a name that wasn't so disgusting. So they're called jelly bean babies. Wow. Yeah, it's really, you can talk to Jasmine about what's going on in the Marshall Islands, it's uh, incomprehensible. But the women in Fallujah are basically being told, do not have babies for at least a generation because they're all being mutated. It caused it, the cancer rates are off the charts, and so again, it has to do with the money. Our right now, our military is out of control, and it's all about making money. And they view nuclear weapons as a simple, easy way to make money because they they don't even have to buy the product really at a high cost because it comes from the nuclear power plants. So they get it practically for nothing, and they get to make these depleted. Depleted uranium weapons are considered low-grade radiation. And what they do is they fill a weapon, a, 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 a shell basically, with hundreds of uh, pellets of low-grade radiation. And so the idea was that when it blew up, it was such low-level radiation that it wouldn't cause problems. But Exactly, but good, good response there. <laughs> good response. See, you, the radiation glasses are working. So tell me, but what? Well, I mean, it just seems to me that the the friction with all of these balls rubbing against each other during the explosion would rub some, you know, trace molecules off of these, yes. and then we have little particles of you know, substandard radiation or something like that, but they're still in the atmosphere and they're in the soil and they're in the water and I mean, they're just... Yes, yes. Uh, that seems like a really poor choice. Yes, it is a really poor choice, so... Well, look, thank you for this interview and I really appreciate it and here we are from the Fukushima Protest Challenge in Eugene, Oregon. And this is actually going to be posted up on my website, Nuts for Art. And probably on the Eugene Media website by Jana, who is actually filming it all for us. Thanks, Jana.